welcome to another episode of Experience a Very Intense Educational Reawakening. This is your, the one and only Xavier, now bringing it to you. Now, today we are going to talk about a case of murder which happened in Jamaica recently and to see if we can go into it and see what really happened. So, today I'm putting on my forensic cap. And I'm going to think like a policeman. Like a real police. Not like a little fool, fool, idiot. People at Jamaica will call themselves police. We are take taxpayers' money and a fast for things. Real police. Analytical thing we are going on now. Now, I don't want to spend some time um, telling you in my own words what actually happened. So, we'll just go straight into the news report and um see where we take it now this the, one of the reports is from the gleaner and one is from the observer now let's go into the reports and then we take up the analysis from there okay an elderly man who returned to the island from canada last week was gone down at his home in chapleton clarendon on tuesday this the deceased has been identified as ansel lynch who was said to be in his 70s According to reports, sometime after 2 a.m., Lynch and his wife were at home when gunmen entered their house through a window. Lynch went to investigate and was shot by the men who then fled the scene. The woman was unharmed, but Lynch reportedly, reportedly died at the scene. The police were alerted shortly after the incident. No motive had yet been established for the killing but a police probe is developing. Okay. The other news report. Resettled Jamaicans in Clarendon are reportedly, reportedly terrified after a 72-year-old returned resident was shot and killed in the wee hours of Tuesday morning, December 1st, in Chapleton. Grieving widow Inez Lynch re recalled how Ansel woke about 2.30 a.m. and was heard addressing someone at a door inside the house. After shouting, come out of my house, old nigger, Mr. Lynch was shot twice in a vain attempt to close the door. Mrs. Lynch theorizes that the gunman utilized a silencer because she did not hear the weapon go off. Him say, Inez, Inez, and him go right down to the floor and him sit down so buckle up she said at her partner's folding motion mrs lynch latched the door and bellowed for help from her neighbors the intr the intruder is believed to have entered through an upstairs window remember upstairs window the lynches who flew in last friday regularly travel back to Jamaica to escape the bitter winter months in Canada. Mrs. Lynch doesn't believe robbery was the motive because the attackers did not take anything. Okay, those were the two reports. Now, let's go into this. Um, these men came in through a an upstairs window so we're going to assume that's a two-story house one and that the downstairs windows are grilled because if the downstairs uh windows and the veranda and so on are grilled then sometimes depends on where the windows are upstairs you might not grill it so i'm supposing that this window is not over a balcony if it was over a balcony I'm sure they, they are more than likely they would have grilled those too. So, how did this man come in through the upstairs window? Is it that there is a tree close to the window that him climb on the tree and just come out from the limb and go through the window? Or is it that him pile up drum up on boxes and things or crates and use them to come through the window? Or is it that he brought a ladder with him? I don't know. But how he reached in through the window, where the window was, and what that window leads to, whether a bathroom or a bedroom or what, 
can say a lot about um, whether he actually came in through this window or not. Likely to have come in through this window or not. The second thing is, him coming through the window are them. Them coming through the window and them not touch, them not touch nothing in the house. Them not touch nothing. Nothing them don't touch. But they head straight for the bedroom. When they get to the bedroom, they try to open the door. Mr. Lynch woke up, allegedly, went to the door. And as they tried to push the door in, he tried to push it back to close it. They shot him twice in his chest and then simply walked away. Walked away, went back upstairs, back through the window, and escaped. She now closed the door, took him into her arms and him fall up, and start borrowing for teeth and murder and call out to all our neighbor them for murder. No. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Gunman come in in a your house. Them not take nothing. Them come head straight for your bedroom. Them come to the bedroom. The man wake up. The man go to the door. Them shoot it. Them must go to the man live with somebody and live with him wife. And them know say more than likely the wife and the, and the husband is sleeping at the same bed. Them are gonna leave a witness. One, two. She ball out same time and she not expect the gunman them to turn back come kill her. No. The gunman them don't even look if them see Canadian dollars. Look how Canadian dollars do. Them them leave the witness. Them don't even come in at the bedroom. Once them put the two bullets in them chest, them simply turn and walk. Away. So them never want no money. Them just want him. And here no no here's the clincher. Oh no no here, here's the clincher. The the two bullets where them fire in at the man chest and kill him. She no hear no sound. She was wide awake. She was about six feet from him, maybe ten feet, depends on where she was. And she no hear no gunfire. She not hear no gunfire, you know. <laughs> no, you may wonder if that's possible. And I'm telling you in a real life, no. It, it is impossible for you not to hear that gunfire. And here is why. Now, when you notice that in the movies, when you don't hear a gunfire, when you hear that, pew, pew, pew. But believe me, brethren, not a movie. In a real life, and a so silence weapon song. You hear me? Silence weapon no so and so. So here is what. Now I am going to give you guys and I'm gonna show you an example of how a silence weapon sound and how an unsilenced weapon sound. Now first let's go into how you're gonna see the two examples of how they sound. Now watch this. Now you hear that. Now you see there is there is a difference in the sound, but it's not much difference. And now we want to listen it again. Just, just listen it again. All right, go through. Alright, now that you have heard that, does that really sound like something that you couldn't hear if you're six feet away? No, no, what we might say is maybe the unit you're having to your hand listening to that makes it sound almost equal. But let us look, look let's just go into the science of it for a minute. Let's go into the science. Let me put on my technical cap along with my forensic cap. 
a blender no um okay and on silence let us say this this, this gunman had used a the person who did the killing used a nine millimeter more than like but whether a nine millimeter it could be a 0.45 or it could be a 0.38 but since the standard murder weapon of jamaican violence producer is a 9 mm let's go with that having said that it would not make a difference what type of handgun because they're coming at roughly the same decibel rating. Now, the decibel rating of a standard handgun is between 165 and 167 decibels. That is the, 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 the sound level. Not the sustained sound level, but how high it can be. What between 165 and 167 decibels? For an unsuppressed weapon, an unsilenced handgun. Now, for the silence weapon coming at 141 to 146 decibel 141 to 146 decibel compared to unsilenced 165 to 167 now we can see that that is not less than 25 percent of the um of the sound is blocked by the silencer less than 25 percent or roughly 25 percent so three quarter of the sound of the gun still gets out into the open ear and you can hear it. Now let's go further. We ne ne we go even deeper with you know. Let's look at a blender. A blender coming at 88 decibel. A typical blender is somewhere around 88 decibel. The sound level. Now think about it. If somebody in a your kitchen I blend up something at 2.30 a.m. when you know, say, there is no, you, 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 outside of all the cricket you go down here, and peeny wall, and at 88 decibel, you can hear a blender on the kitchen floor in your bedroom at 2 a.m. because there is no other sound. So if you can hear a blender run on your kitchen, I blend up something, if you're not in your bedroom, if with your door locked, Quite possibly, because of how far the bed, bedroom is. And, and a silence weapon coming at 141 to 146 decibel. Nearly twice as loud. And this is 6 feet, roughly 6 to 10 feet, at your bedroom door. And you tell me, say you don't hear it? Come on. Think, people. Think. Think. This don't even take common sense. This is, this is, you don't have no sense at all. You know this is a bull. Now, guys, we know that most crime that happen is normally, most that crime that happen in a home is normally husband kill wife or wife kill husband. And it's normally over things like insurance or just want to get property or what. I don't know if it's so in this case. And what me just say, think about it. Look into it. Did this make sense to you? That the man come in, two bedroom window, come straight to bedroom, kill the man, leave her, no even look for Canadian dollars in the room. One of the things. But the thing said to get Canadian dollars before him come in. Eh? Yeah, but as I say, think about it. Don't think him get some the, the Canadian dollars where we him to get before him come in the place. Don't think him will come in through the window. Or he was letting him through the grill. You know, and doing things. I mean, just ask him. You know? And <laughs> when I think, really think, say a gunman, I got just come in and just kill the husband and look for the witness. And you think, say, after all, the witness come out and ball out and a ball for murder and thief. If not come back, come do or nothing. Now, guys, <laughs> this is a level of a thing. But will this murder be solved? Very likely no. You know why this not murder will not be solved? Because the person, well, well, the, 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 the person who do it will not be, who orchestrate this thing will never be considered as a suspect. One. Be uh, and why? Because Jamaican police are the, some of the stupidest freaks you can find. They can't think this far ahead. They don't think, they cannot think this far ahead. Them can't reason things through so. Them just a take money and a fast pretense. 
say them get salary to solve crime. They can't detect what happened here, but them are detecting. Hell no. Anyway, guys, that's just the way I'm looking at it. This murderer, or murderess, as the case may be, is going to walk free, free with the cohorts and so on. But what what do you think? What do you think this makes sense? <laughs> guys, yeah, this is just Xavier again. With him, with him thinking cap, trying to, you know, get people to think and reason things through. But just, if you don't have any comments, post them below. And, you know, hit the notification bell so you can see when my new videos come out. Give us a like. And, you know, just go and take care of yourself. And share. Share, share. Let other people come in on this and... He get some and see what they think too. Alright? Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day. Wherever in the world you are. Love you all, yeah? Take care. But wait a minute. Wait a minute, the people. Who don't remember this case in about June of 2020 when Tamar Geddes was shot and killed when gunmen went upstairs her house and shot her in front of her daughter and left. Only remember that her sister downstairs says she never hear no bullet go up. She never heard the shots. Guess who did kill her? No, no, say the same sister we never hear nothing. Did arrange and set up the killing. I'm not accusing anyone in this particular case, you know, but I'm just saying that is something to take into consideration, okay? And I bring something else to my attention to. In FBI interrogation techniques and most like DEA, um, Drug Enforcement Agency, when they are interrogating you, they wait to see how much you psychologically take yourself away from a scene. And when a person tends to say that they do not, um, they didn't hear anything, they never really saw it, they were there. Since them can't take with themselves physically from it, what they do is to sort of take their eyesight from it. I was physically there, but my eyes and ears were closed. That's how it normally go. Because once they can taste their presence there, they'll try to remove their eyes and ears and their nose from it to say, I was physically there, but those senses were not receptive to all the other auditory and um, olfactory and visual um, sensations that were coming to me at the time. So bear that in mind. All right, I just had to add that. Um, anyway, take care.